let's get into the slaughter of of Gaza last night. One of the most disgusting offenses that we have seen. We've seen the Israeli government literally bomb and target journalists, UN officials. They cut off all electricity, communication. And that is what makes this massacre so devastating based on everything we've seen coming out. The utter destruction by Israel against Gaza right now. Let me pull up this receipt here. And it's very scary and very upsetting because it's a genocide and slaughter being done in darkness where they can't share their stories. You had journalists that was barely able to get reception and they were saying their final messages out. You have uh, people who are colleagues of journalists who was in Gaza who sent out tweets. I'm going to show you guys a few where they worry about their their safety. And you can just hear nothing but screams in the background. Like, this is one of them. Now you just see videos of Gaza absolutely on fire. And before, before there's a genocide like this, before a slaughter like this can take place, there has to be a messaging campaign. There has to be a, a dehumanization of the enemy. That is what precedes uh, mass humanitarian tragic events and genocides like these. You need quote-unquote baby-faced progressive politicians to come out and say Israel had the right to defend yourself. You had to have people in Sanders, like Bernie Sanders, release statements that saying supporting the freedom of Palestinians, stand up for babies being bombed and calling for a ceasefire, make you complicit with Hamas. And because of people like Bernie Sanders and the, and the people who keep condemning the Palestinian people, that led to this situation right here. These things don't come out of nowhere. This is the result of nonstop dehumanization of, of Palestinians. And the little bit of footage that we got of this slaughter that essentially happened in darkness, you can literally, it, wait, we don't even understand what happened yet. Like we talking about death counts that could be in the thousands and thousands. I'm talking about thousands of children probably was killed. And from the footage that we got, we just you just hear Palestinians screaming, just screaming. This is one of them. That's all you hear, <laughs> like from everyone who get any able to get anything out of Gaza. This is what the West is doing, and I, and I get your thoughts on this here soon, Noah. But in the past, this is from Sprinter. In the past twenty minutes, Palestinian Israeli media are reporting that Israeli Air Force has launched what appears to be the most violent and massive air campaigns against targets inside the Gaza Strip. According to the pa Palestinians, this is the heaviest and unprecedented attack by Israeli war, war plans since hostilities began earlier this month. I want you guys to realize that the death count for Palestinians is already double the Israeli slaughter from 2014. I'm going to continue here. Local media reports a complete disruption of communication and internet systems throughout Palestinian territory. All regions of the Gaza Strip are now under airstrikes as sounds of massive explosions were heard everywhere. Like, we don't even know what really happened yet because it's, there's a blackout. We got a little bit of film. And I really hope we don't get on trouble on YouTube here because this shit has to be shown. Like, Noah, when I first saw this last night, I literally thought a lot of this shit was fake. Then I checked so many sources, and a ton of people were posting this stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I saw it when I woke up this morning, and my stomach just kind of dropped. Because if you remember <laughs> yesterday, they were talking about turning off all of the electricity to all of Gaza, right? Um, and I don't think we, we think about what that does to people. Uh, just that, you know, where would uh, JB, for instance, be if he couldn't get power to the dialysis machines, right? Yep. Uh, think about the uh, how many babe, premature babies are depending on electricity in incubators right now. Speaking of, um, I'll just read this because you brought it up. That's a great transition. As Gaza hospitals run out of fuel, incubated preterm babies will not make it. And the most disgusting thing is, do you remember when they were lying us into the Iraq invasion? 
And there was that whole thing about the Republican Guard throwing babies out of incubators. Yep. People were, now. people were upset because they believed that. This is literally what they're doing now. The same people that lied about it in the past. I mean, they, they, they lied and they continue to spread a lie about Hamas beheading babies in Israel. But Israel is literally beheading babies in Palestine. What do you guys think happened when a baby is hit with a fucking bomb? Exactly. They're beheaded. <laughs> That's and why, do, why do we think they turned off all the power, all the communications? Because of all the videos of this that we're getting out. You know, young people overwhelmingly call bullshit on this. This whole narrative, right? You can actually line up who trusts like legacy mainstream media and who doesn't with who believes the genocide uh, or the, the Israeli narrative, right? That there's no genocide happening. It's wild Fair and dude. people aren't believing it because there's direct evidence from where they go to get news. They are doing a genocide in silence and Israel is trying to get rid of every single witness. They want no witnesses to see what happened. And so you guys, Israel targeting Israeli reporters. People are telling the truth about what's happening are being targeted by the Israeli government the same way the Israeli government targeted Shreen Abdul Akhla, the esteemed and famous Palestinian journalist. A sniper shot her in the head despite the fact that she had a helmet and a vest that said media. And now they are doing it again. They're, and not just journalists, their families. What was the name of yes. the uh, Al Jazeera journalist? They killed his whole fucking yeah. family. It's and they were talking about yeah. having to turn down the volume on Al Jazeera's coverage of this, right? That's what yeah. Anthony Blinken called it, turning down the volume. Oh shit! Do I have that? Let me see. What, I think that was an old set. My nigga tries to cover. What if I have it? Because it was gangsters. Fuck where. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Blinken was like, hey, guys, I suggest you guys stop covering the war crimes going on in Gaza. And they said, hey, yo, I thought you believed in freedom of speech. Fuck you. And then they're like, oh, it'd be a shame if something happened to you and your family. And something happened to their family. Now, let me yeah. read this because it's up on the stream. And there's so many of these tweets going off right now. I've lost contact with Motez Aziza, one of the most important Palestinian journalists in Gaza. He hasn't posted in over 23 hours, hasn't responded to my text, he says there's a target on his back for his reporting. There's no internet, no tele telecommunications. Do you guys have any idea what the hell is going on right now? No one does because there's a blackout. We haven't heard from none of these journalists. It's we just witnessed in, over the last 24 hours, 24 to 30 hours, it one of the most devastating massacres and crimes against humanity in my lifetime. And everyone who was complicit in any way, shape, or form will be held accountable for the rest of our life. The Zionists have made an enemy out of me for the rest of my life. And I'm being very careful what I say on YouTube. You know, be very, very careful. <laughs> it's almost the, on site, fam. <laughs> and and here's the thing: years after it's no longer dangerous for the truth to let out, the ruling class always begins letting it out. We all know we were lied yeah. into Iraq now, right? What happens when people finally go to their mainstream corporate media and go, oh, that was all a lie too? And let's say Israel continues this, right? How many Palestinian people are going to die? And how many people are going to sort of own that for cheering it on? You know, and the most disgusting thing about it, I don't want to like rant. I know it's not my, my show or nothing. But the most disgusting thing about it is this has happened to Jews, right? This is literally what the Nazis did to us. My grandfather fought in the Red Army in World War II because they were coming to exterminate us. If he saw what this, what these people were doing in our name right now, 
He would be dis absolutely disgusted. He would turn his back on everything. Everything, I'm telling you. I know that it's it's just it's sad. Yeah, you have uh you had thousands of Jewish New Yorkers uh that was protesting not in our name. You had Jewish protesters all over the world. There was a there was a protest in the UK, not in our name. And at the same time, you had right wingers, people who are not Jewish, like Megan McCain, that says anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. So there are non-Jewish, and then, because in America, uh, I saw someone tell me this. I need fact check, but someone was like, "You know, there are more people who support Zionism among evangelical Christians than Jewish people." And I, I and I'm saying this is my caveat right now. I got fact check that. So that's my caveat. There. I, I got fact check that. A friend told me that, but based on his, based on them, what they said, more evangelical Christians support Zionism than Jews. So you have e evangelical Christians. Looking at Jewish people who want peace and calling those Jewish people fake Jews. What is more anti-Semitic than that? Right. Noah, I mean, Megan McCain and, and Jesse Waters and all the identity politics pushers now on the right think you, a person of Jewish heritage, is anti-Semitic. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Because I think there's a good transition. Because One of the reasons I brought you on is you're one of the many. One of the many right. people. That's that's actually advocating for Judaism in the right way, but go ahead, no, I want to get your thoughts in, on this nonsense that comes from Zionist propagandists attacking real Jewish people who stand for uh, for peace. It's wild to me that, um, first of all, he gets to decide who's Jewish and who's not, right? <laughs> um, but to me, it seems like the more anti-Semitic thing would to be to treat all Jewish people as a monolith, as if we all think the same thing. And if we don't think what these Christian people want us to think, we're not Jewish enough for them and we're actually, we're the anti-Semites, that's why, right? Uh, secondly, there are a few, quite a few Jewish groups here that explain the sort of uh, Talmudic law, which is like the one of the the Jewish books of laws, right? The rather than just the 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 Torah, um, and in Talmudic law, it talks about the sort of promised land, right? That uh, it's the work of the coming Messiah. So for people to go about doing work that is the work of the Messiah who isn't here yet, sort of strips them of their Judaism in the process. Right. And so these groups say these guys, when you become a Zionist, you lose any Jewish character you had anyway. So to talk about anti-Zionism as anti-Semitism makes no sense whatsoever to them. That was Nikki Haley was saying. Uh, she was saying anti-Zionism, anti-Jew, uh, make me your anti-Semitic. And I'm like, I don't, you're a Christian, aren't you? What the, who the fuck are you to say that? <laughs> In Palestine, there are quite a few of these stories I see. Jews are conscious opposed by Netanyahu. Genocide protests at PSU. There have been so many protests. Let's see if I can find some more. Some I've seen posted in London. Uh, I don't know if this is a, is a Jewish free Palestine protest. That's one of them here. Uh, let's see if I can find another one. Here it is. U.S. Jews protest Israeli evasion of Gaza and Grand Station. Yeah, this is what I mentioned earlier. Let's play the video just a little bit. According to Nikki Haley and other right-wing Christians and the identity politics pushers on the right, Ben Shapiro, A1 and Fox News, including Matt Gates and quote-unquote right-wing populists, they are identity politics pushers. According to them, these are all fake Jews. They, them, they as Christians have the ability to label you guys fake Jews. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Isn't you interesting? know, because, go ahead. Well, we were talking earlier about their first move always being to lie, right? To create a straw man argument. And that's all this is, really. It's just a lie. It's just like when they were talking about, what was it? Uh, something like Cooper University or something like that. There was a, 
pre-Palestine demonstration and then a Zionist demonstration. And there were all these news reports all over corporate media talking about how the pre-Palestine ki uh, kids were like chasing down these, these uh, couple of Jewish kids talking about killing all the Jews. And they expect us to believe there's like this major wave of anti-Semitism just sweeping the country. And college kids are like all of a sudden just like hating Jews all left and right. Man, I ain't seen a single, a single uh, uh, increase in reality, in the real world. You know, like, I, my family, we joke that we're Jew-ish because my, uh, my, my family, it comes from my dad's side. So my grandparents on my dad's side were Jewish. And technically, you're, uh, like, it, it has to come through your mom's side, right? But, like, I'm all over these communities and nothing. Nothing. There's no, you know, hate slogans. Uh, there's no people getting, you know, attacked or yelled at on the street. Nothing. Nothing. Not a single thing. So for them to talk about like this, like big wave of anti-Semitism, it's just another uh, opening by lying. I have not seen this video. I just saw it watch scrolling. Uh, based on the description, is based. So hopefully, it's, it they're not uh, clip baiting us here. So this is Rika Brown explains the, the history of Jewish anti-Zionism. So let's, I haven't seen it. I just saw it now, so I think it'd be fun to play this. And then I will, I'll let it get a reaction here. Oh, hold on, let me unmute it here. All Jewish people support Israel. Absolutely not. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak recently gave a speech about Hamas's attacks on Israel, except his speech made it sound like it was an attack on Jewish people everywhere. This atrocity was an existential strike at the very idea of Israel as a safe homeland for the Jewish people. We stand with the Jewish community. Yeah. Sunak's conflation of Jews and Israel might seem reasonable. Israel is the world's only Jewish state, and half of the world's Jews live in Israel. But it's also historically illiterate and deeply anti-Semitic. For as long as there have been Jewish Zionists, there have been Jewish anti-Zionists. I'm one of them, by the way. In the late 19th century, Orthodox Jews slammed Theodore Herzl's proposal for a Jewish I'm state glad I found because I they believed this. it was sacrilegious. Uh. Meanwhile, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Jewish Bundists rejected the idea that a nation state would liberate Jewish people, instead arguing that Jews should fight for better conditions in the diaspora. Today, there remain thousands of Jews around the world that are deeply critical of the Israeli state. In the UK, they're part of organizations like Na'amod and Jews for Justice for Palestinians, both of which in recent days were out on the streets alongside thousands of others protesting for Palestinian freedom even as many of them were also grieving friends and family members who've been killed in Israel. Unfortunately, these Jews are often sidelined in political debates, which is helpful for politicians like Rishi Sunak, who can claim that supporting a settler colony is actually racial justice. Neat. In the UK and around the world, Jews have had enough of having our grief weaponized to support an ethno state. At least this Jew has. Um, when she's talking about the Jewish boon, uh, within the Soviet Union, they had this like debate of should we have an autonomous Jewish worker state before Israel was even created, right? And they began building one, and it split Jews down the middle in the Soviet Union uh, it, because of the religious question and because of the sort of um, multinational coalitions that the Soviet Union was founded upon, right? And they ended up doing away with it. And Jews lived just fine in the Soviet Union until it fell.